My name is Corey Smith. I'm finally known as the local book pusher. I'm the founder of Black and Brown, a smart bookstore. And Black and Brown is a community safe space that moonlights as a bookstore. And so our mission here now and always will be amplifying Black and Brown storytelling. I'm a Wanda County native. I spent a lot of time um, my childhood through high school at West Wyandotte County Public Library. And then there were other libraries, but that was my favorite. And so my family also understood that I love to read. So they always gave me access to that. I can't remember how young I was when I got my first library card. That was like big. That was like big deal for me. And so I just, I don't know. I've always gravitated towards black stories. I've always felt like if I exist, there's stories that have to speak to my existence. There's other people that live lives that are similar to mine. Um, and I was a huge history buff. And so anything surrounding like the civil rights movement, specifically Malcolm X, a little bit of the less uh, snick side of things, but also the Black Panther Party was a really big formative piece of my life around literature and activism. And so that kind of set me on my path. I started coming to the Black and Brown because I really enjoy history. That's one of my favorite things. And when I first heard about the bookstore, I knew there was a lot of history to be found. I wasn't expecting to find living history in terms of people and friends and connections and communi community. But once I found that, I'm a customer for as long as the store is here, which I hope is for a very, very, very long time. I had three jobs that I was like, this is gonna be my job, this is it, this is what I wanna be when I grow up. I wanted to be a librarian, shocker. I wanted to be a hair beautician, and then I also wanted to be a criminal defense attorney. Hair beautician, we got that out of there real quick. The librarian job was kind of just taken from me. So at the age of 14, I started applying for the library. Never got a call back, never even got like a rejection letter. Um, and so that kind of like was like, oh, I guess y'all don't want me. <laughs> All right. And so I shifted gears into legal work. I've always wanted to help people that look like me. So I specifically lent towards um, criminal defense work just because of how many people, black and brown bodies are consistently incarcerated, falsely a lot of times, or just without you know, adequate representation. So all of my formal training was in preparation to, to be an attorney, and then I got into nonprofit work. I worked at a nonprofit law firm, and then the pandemic happened, and I wanted to connect with people in a different way. I wanted to, I still wanted to create a space that felt safe. I wanted to create a space that felt like it was centering our stories and our existence. The idea to open a bookstore in a space where we don't typically get to see ourselves came to the forefront around 2020. I needed to know this woman because she had the temerity to open a brick and mortar bookstore in the middle of pandemic lockdown. I needed to know a person who has the courage and the vision to do that. I was, at the time, I was working um, in nonprofit law, and so I was meeting families kind of in their darkest moments. We were helping families stabilize from like the negative impacts of student mobility. And so I was seeing families that might have been dealing with domestic violence or evictions and things like that. And I wanted a space that felt like it was a safe space to us, that felt like art because I love art, I love creativity. And I wanted a like an information hub. And then my older brother passed away in 2019, and his name was Cody. And I wanted a way to like honor him. He was the creative of us too. And so I wanted a space that not only housed information, but it also was a safe hub for creatives. And so I wanted a space that kind of felt like an art gallery. If you come in, then you kind of get the experience, pair that with art. As authors, publishers, we spend all this time and money making beautiful covers. And in Corey's store, they're seen. Around that same time that my brother passed away, about a month later, Nipsey Hussle. And if anyone's familiar with his legacy and his impact, he was really big on technology and 
music. And so he had a smart clothing store. And then that kind of gave me the idea of like, what would it be like to have a smart bookstore when everyone says books, you know, reading is dead. Technology has killed out reading in the interest of reading, but how can we create a way to have literature and creative spaces and information pair that with making technology work with us and for us and not against us. Black and Brown to me represents everything that other bookstores don't, which is, it's loud in here, it's music in here. The books are not placed in any specific order, it's based on spirit. And so I wanted a space that you don't have to know everything and anything to come in here. You're welcome to come in however you are. And then, you know, we can figure out where you wanna be and we can meet you there. I come here to get my, um, to get my mood lifted. I come here because there's a connection to the community, because I feel like I have an opportunity to serve by contributing my words to this bookstore, by being a part of book clubs, then I have an opportunity to give back. When people think of bookstores, it's usually like staunchy and quiet, like a library. It's kind of intimidating. Um, and a lot of bookstore culture is very elitist in practice. And by that I just mean a lot of times people expect, you know, you go into a bookstore, you have to know who your favorite author is, you have to know what kind of genre you like. But the smart feature allows for me to create kind of a breadcrumb and allow you to create your own path and relationship to the literature or the themes, the concepts, or even to, you know, the author at large. And so I wanted it to be a learning tool. I wanted it to be an access point. There's so many people who say like, oh, I don't read or I haven't read since school. And I wanted it to feel less academic and more community. And so putting playlists behind books kind of give you an idea of what this book might be about. It kind of puts you in the setting of, oh, okay, I can see this, I can get it. Or maybe there's TED Talks, maybe you're a podcast fan, and there are podcasts that are breaking down certain things in this book that we wouldn't have thought of. And so, to me, it just feels like a little more of a, an entryway. Less than a year into business, my website was hacked and ransomed for Bitcoin, which was lovely. And this was on the cusp of like some racial tension that had happened. It happened in March. So February 2022, I was a part of a Zoom call for a local university um, and that was Zoom jacked and like racial bombings and things like that happened. And then that March, um, someone I go to log into the website and it does not exist. And then I get an email that says, we want a large amount of money. Um, send us, you know, send it to us via Bitcoin. And so they basically wiped out the entire website. And so all of the like smart features, all of the technology, all of the things that we had built out gone, lost. And so that's when you learn about cybersecurity. But that was, that was a hurdle that I did not anticipate and so, Trying to like repair all of that, which was a third of our business that was gone at that point. Rebuilding that was something I did not anticipate. And a lot of questions I usually get is, you know, have I ever had any issues being a black bookstore, only carrying black and brown literature? Have I ever came across people who, you know, felt like that wasn't right? And I haven't, luckily. So really it's been that hacking was massive, like we're still coming back from that. We're still building out QR codes and, you know, fixing the back end from all of that. Have I faced any doubts? I'm gonna say yes. Um, I think it's a thing that happens. Like I, there's nothing about this business. There's not a single thing that I would do differently. There's not a single regret that I have about opening this bookstore. I think that the country as it stands is going towards a direction of lack of information, lack of access to information. And so being a bookstore, being a bookseller, and kind of combating the powers that be that are Amazon, which is our biggest op. Being in a space where people don't necessarily feel like reading and literature means things, and trying to tell people not only does literature matter, but black, brown, indigenous people's stories matter. It's its own kind of interesting dilemma. So every single day I stand here saying, no, our stories do matter, they do exist. 
The fact that I've never, I've never been awarded a grant, I've never taken out loans or had to take out loans for this business to be, you know, successful or operational still three years later, speaks to not just my work ethic, but the support and the need and the validation that the community has for this space. Something that Corey says a lot is that the community has always been here. The store just brings everybody together. And I've met so many people who I think really, really well with, and they've always been here, but it's because of the store that I've gotten to meet. When our website was hacked the first time, I think our goal might have been like $7,000 or $8,000, and we raised that on a GoFundMe, I think, less than a week and then surpassed it. That's the community. We currently have a rent fund, and again, it's the community that comes through and supports us and continues to support us and share our names and spaces. So as long as the community rocks with it, we'll be here. When I think of what black bookstores mean to communities or what anything, any type of space like this means in a community, it is information its community and sanctuary. And so also when I think of the civil rights movements, churches and bookstores were like the epicenters. That's where a lot of like plans were formed. That's where a lot of organization happened were in bookstores and churches. And it's not by accident. These are two separate spaces that to a functioning community represent salvation. It means safety, but it also means how do we get the information that we need to be successful, to sustain, to protect ourselves. We know there's a trend of like book censorship and types of books that people can access on a daily basis. And time and time again, we see that a lot of those books that are challenged are often black stories, brown stories, stories that talk about different gender identities, talk about different sexualities. And so for me, I want us to make sure that we have informed consent. I want us to be as informed as possible so that we have all the options and we are making the best choices for ourselves. And so Black and Brown to me represents a space where you're going to get real information and then you get to decide, you know, however you utilize that information, but you can't say that you didn't know. On a large scale, people ask me all the time about like, would I franchise Black and Brown? Probably not. I want people to come to Kansas City. I want you to get the feel. Like you need to come to this city to feel the magic. I moved to Kansas City about two years ago and I knew I needed a bookstore to help me really feel a part of the community and to deal with some of those early move emotions. Um, I was deep on Google, found black and brown. I was like, all right, it's, made, it's meant to be. <laughs> Maybe that's why we should move here. Um, and then we came in when we were visiting and Corey's energy just really uh, drew us in, made us feel at home, made us feel like this was a community we could be a part of. I'm big on like the Black Panther Party movement and to me they represented so much to their communities and then communities at large, to the ecosystem at large. And I want, I want Black and Brown to be something like that. I want the legacy that follows behind me to just know Black girls, Black boys, Brown, like Black and Brown people at large. We can create something that feels like it's for us and we don't have to necessarily go into spaces and shrink ourselves or we don't have to go into spaces and believe that the bare minimum is enough for us, because it's not. And more so importantly, I want us to always remember Sankofa is about you know, going to the past and bringing that into the future. And so we need all of each other. We need each other, we need ecosystem. So I want my legacy to, to resemble like Sankofa.